Okay, if I could have your attention, I think we're ready to start the afternoon session. Um, thank you again for being here. Uh, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, the moderator for this afternoon's session. She is Dr. Loretta DiPietro. Uh, she's from right down the street. She chairs the Department of Exercise Science at George Washington University. Uh, we're meeting here this afternoon in her living room. Oh, no, no, that's not it. <laughs> but she is right in the neighborhood. Uh, Loretta, all yours. Thank you. Russ, I notice you're not wearing your activity apparel today. Well, I'm very pleased to be here um, and uh, to introduce the next speakers. The focus of this next session is physical activity in the primary prevention of overweight and obesity in adults. And so our first speaker is Dr. Ulf Eklund, who is a professor in physical activity epidemiology at the Department of Sports Medicine at the Norwegian School of Sports Sciences in Oslo, Norway. He is also a senior investigator scientist at the Medical Research Council, the epidemiology unit at the University of Cambridge. Dr. Uckland's career has focused on the role of physical activity in non-communicable disease prevention, as well as the biological underpinnings describing these associations. Our second speaker will be Dr. Robert Ross, who is a professor within the School of Kinesiology and Health Studies at Queen's University in Canada. Dr. Ross has spent the majority of his career on the prevention and management of obesity in adults, as well as their related comorbidities. It's my pleasure to welcome you and first to present Dr. Uckland. Thanks, Loretta. Thanks for the introduction, and thanks for the morning speakers who uh, uh, set up the scene for my talk and for Cathy to uh, describe the differences between cross-sectional and, pro and prospective ob observational studies. I'm going to give an ep epidemiological approach to this. And uh, we know that cross-sectionally there is a very strong inverse association between high, higher levels of physical activity and uh, body weight and obesity. The question is, what does it look like in observational research? So this is the latest systematic review I, I found on the association between physical activity and weight gain. And in this review, they concluded that the epidemi epidemiological evidence showed that physical activity in general is not associated with subsequent ex excessive weight gain. And if there is an association, it's a, a very small and negative association. Well, <coughs> I was... Uh, Trying to, tr I, I'm trying. I will try to, to, to try to carve up this a little bit more in detail. And what I will try and try to do during the next 20 minutes is to really to try to address a, a couple of questions. The, the first question is whether the high levels of physical activity prevent weight gain over time. The second question is whether high levels of physical activity prevent the development of obesity. And that's that's a slightly different question. The third question is about associations between activity and weight gain, whether that differs depending on the baseline uh, weight status of the individuals you are studying. And the fourth question is whether change in activity is associated with change in weight gain. And finally, I'm going to address the same question as Cathy did this morning in children, whether there is a reverse causation so that a, a deposit at one point in time predicts lower levels of physical activity. So this is the first question. In a simple model, you, you measure physical activity at baseline, you measure body weight at follow-up, and you adjust for a number of confounding factors. Uh, and this is what we do in epidemiology. Those confounding factors are factors that are associated with both your exposure, physical activity, and your outcome, body weight. And it could be diet, it could be alcohol consumption, socioeconomic status, age, gender, etc., etc. Importantly, if you want to study temporal associations in the, for this association, you also need to adjust for baseline body weight, because baseline body weight is probably the most important predictor of follow-up body weight. And in this way, we can determine the, the direction of association between physical activity and body weight. So what does the literature say? 
This is data from a large European study in almost 250,000 individuals. We followed those individuals for five years, and the main outcome, <coughs> main outcome was weight and weight circumference at follow-up. We adjusted the analysis for a number of covariates, as you can see here, confounding factors, including baseline body weight or baseline weight circumference, depending on what was the outcome. Our exposure was physical activity, and the physical activity was a self-reported index into four different categories. Inactive, moderately inactive, moderately active, and active, combining leisure time physical activity and occupational physical activity. And we validated this index in about 2,000, almost 2,000 adults from the same 10 countries as were included in the EPIC study. And we found that this index predicted uh, higher levels of physical activity and energy expenditure measured by combined heart rate and movement sensing. And this is what you can see oops, well, in, the, in the middle uh, of the low, lower, lower graph. So we know we have a pretty valid measure. And what did we find? Well, this is a meta-analysis of, our, uh, of our, our findings. And what we found, to, take, to, to, to sim simplify it, was that physical activity at baseline did not predict weight gain at follow-up when we took the, the, those uh, co covariates into account. How, however, we found that physical activity predicted waist circumference in those studies where we have measured waist circumference at both baseline and follow-up. These data are in men, they were exactly the same in women. The, the magnitude of association was, were minor because uh, a one category increase in physical activity, moving from the inactive category to the moderately inactive category, was associated with a 0.05 centimeter less gain in waist circumference over five years, which is almost, uh, or which is, I would say, clinically non significant, but statistically significant, depending on the, on, on the large sample size. <clears throat> the next question is then does physical activity prevent the development of obesity? Again, we control for our confounding factors. We look at obesity at follow-up, I mean those ones who develop obesity over time and become uh, obese. And sometimes, uh, and some studies do adjust for baseline body weight, others don't. There is a debate whether you should adjust for baseline body weight in these types of analysis, and it might be over adjustment. Uh, and the stati our statistical ex experts are not really, uh, uh, they are debating this. So what do we see? Well, again, in our study in, in, in uh, the Europeans, in both men and women, we observed that uh, baseline physical activity, or sh moving from one category to the next category in physical activity, uh, was important to uh, reduce the risk of becoming obese. In women, the, the, the risk was reduced by 10%, and in men, by about 7%. So there seems to be some sort of a, uh, that physical activity may prevent uh, the development of obesity over time in those ones who are normal weight uh, at baseline or overweight. And this is actually uh, also observed in, a, in, in data from the Women's Health Study. They followed these women uh, for, for almost 12 years. They started out with all the women who were normal weight at baseline, and then they followed them, and they found that vigorous intensity physical activity was associated with a le lower risk of becoming obese. And especially in those ones who did quite a lot of vigorous intensity activity, the risk was reduced by, by about 20%. However, when they adjusted their analysis for baseline body weight, oh sorry, baseline BMI, all these associations went away as you can see here. Another way of looking at this, and this is an interesting study because they, 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 this is the data from the CARDIA study, who have repeated measures of both physical activity and body weight over time. And they looked at the association between physical activity level and the gain in body weight, or more exactly, the gain in, in, in BMI. And what you can see from these graphs is that those ones who were consistently highly active over 20 years, they gained less BMI. And that was most, most, most importantly seen in, in, in women. Uh, although they started out uh, uh, with a lower BMI, they also uh, gained less BMI over time. 
So the conclusion from this study was that maintaining high activity levels throughout young adulthood may lessen weight gain as, gain as young adults transition to middle age, and that was particularly observed in women. However, all groups gained weight, regardless of their activity level at baseline and, uh, and throughout the study. And there were only 11 to 12 percent of the people who remained in the high uh, active group over 20 years. So the other question, or the third question I want to address, are the differences depending on the in initial weight status. And in this model, we look at baseline physical activity, whether it predicts follow-up body weight, and we stratify by baseline BMA status. And we adjust for the same confounders as, as I shown in previous models. And you can st statistically test for the interaction between baseline physical activity and BMI. This is data from the Women's Health Study. Uh, they studied these women for, for, for uh, uh, between 1992 and 2007, over a 15-year period. The mean weight gain was 2.6 kilos per three years, and they looked at weight gain per a three year, any three-year per period. And what they did was that they stratified their groups in, uh, according to physical activity, less than 7.5 meta hours per week, 7.5 to 21 meta hours, and more than 21 meta hours. And 7.5 meta hours corresponds to our uh, physical activity recommendations of about 150 minutes of physical activity per, 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 uh, per week. And then they also stratified uh, their uh, sample into, their, into three different BMI groups, normal weight, overweight, and obese. And the only difference they observed between the physical activity groups in, <coughs> in, 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 in weight gain was in the normal weight group. So those ones who were more physically active, that, that's the reference group, the high physical activity group is the reference group, and they, uh, the, the, those ones in the lower, lower groups, lower activity groups in the normal weight ones gained more weight over time. What they concluded was that physical activity was associated with less weight gain only in those women with a normal BMI. And they also estimated that 60 minutes of, per day of moderate intensity activity is, is needed throughout the study uh, to, to, to gain less than 2.3 kilograms of body weight. Uh, this is again data from, from, the, from the European uh, EPIC study. Uh, and we, we did a similar analysis where we, str we stratified our sample into normal weight, overweight, and obese individuals, and men and women. And what we, what, what we can see in this, in this study was that although even if we didn't see any association between baseline physical activity predicting sh uh, gain in body weight over time in the entire sample, we could observe an association in the normal weight. So both in normal weight men and in normal weight women, there was an inverse association between f baseline physical activity and weight gain, but not in the overweight group, not in the obese group. So maybe there is differ differential associations between physical activity and weight gain, depending on the uh, initial uh, BMI or body weight status. So the fourth question is whether change in activity is associated with change in body weight. When you model this in the simplest, simplest model, you have measured your exposure, physical activity, at two points in time, and you have measured your outcome, body weight or adiposity, at two, two points in time, and you calculate follow-up body weight minus follow-up, oh sorry, baseline body weight as one, as one, one variable, and the change variable for physical activity is obviously uh, follow-up physical activity minus baseline physical activity, and you then examine the associations between these variables. The important with this variable is that it can't determine the temporal direction of association. It's a change by change model, so it, it's very robust to confounding, but it can't determine the direction of association. And what does the data say? Well, I found a few papers on this, and <coughs> this is one study, uh, data from the Nurses' Health Study, and they looked at, uh, they looked at 
increase in body weight more than 5% of, of baseline body weight as the outcome. And they calculated the odds ratios for gaining more than 5% uh, of, of baseline body weight with physical activity. And as you can see in this case, if uh, the reference group is those ones who were low physical activity in 1989 and in 1997, and if you're remaining high, or you, you, you were in the high group both in 1989 and 1997, you had a reduced risk of about 32% of, of gaining more than 5% of body weight. And if you were an increaser, your, your risk was even slightly, mo slightly even more reduced. And if you were a decreaser in physical activity, going from the high to the low group, your risk was increased by 12% to gain more than 5% in body weight. So they concluded that sustained physical activity for more than 30 minutes per day is associated with lower odds of gaining more than 5% of baseline body weight. This is another study looking at, looking at change. And the, the, this is a com, uh, combined data set from uh, three different American cohorts in men and women. A large study, 120,000 participants. They look at change in, in a number of lifestyle variables, including a number of dietary factors, smoking uh, and physical activity. And what they found in this, in, the, in, in, in this study was that they looked at the change in weight for every four year period. And they looked at, uh, stratified the, the data, the exposure was physical activity change and they stratified it into quintiles, five, five equally sized groups. And the lowest quintile who actually reduced physical activity over the four year period was the reference. And as you can see, when you increase or when you go up in the quintiles, i.e. increase physical activity over time, the, uh, the, the change in, in, in body weight goes, uh, uh, increases. So the, so the most active ones uh, have a, an inverse coefficient for, for or, or they, they, they reduce their body weight by about 1.8 pounds. Uh, I'm used to kilograms, not pounds, sorry. Uh, however, what they said in a sent within the results section, in a sentence, just in one sentence, was that absolute levels of physical activity rather than changes in these levels were not associated with weight change. And they didn't show the data, not even in a supplement. supplement. My interpretation, that's my personal interpretation, is that in this data set, physical activity at baseline did not predict weight gain, but change in, the very, change in physical activity predicted change in weight gain. So finally, and this is uh, a bit similar to what Cathy showed you, showed you this morning, it could actually be that we have a reverse causality association, that higher levels of body weight or adiposity at one point in time predicts lower levels of physical activity or higher levels of sedentary time later on. Again, if you model this, you, you model baseline weight, predicting physical activity, adjusting for your confounders and for your baseline activity levels in the simplest model. And this is some data. It's a small data set in uh, less than 400 individuals. It's from the Ely study in Cambridge. The important with this data set is that we, we measure physical activity objectively with heart rate monitoring uh, uh, and we measured uh, adiposity with uh, bioimpedance. So we, we have a pre, uh, some sort of an objective measure of physical activity and an objective measure of, 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 of uh, fat mass. And I was convinced when I did the analysis that I'm going to show that uh, higher levels of sedentary time at baseline predicts weight gain over time or predicts gain in adiposity. And we find no association what's, what, whatsoever. So we turned the, the, the analysis around and looked whether fat mass at baseline predicted higher levels of sedentary time at follow-up. And obviously we could, we, we could demonstrate that. So those ones with higher, higher fat mass at baseline spent more time sedentary at follow-up. And these are those ones who lost fat mass uh, over a measured period. This is the, the amount of time spent sedentary compared to those who gained fat mass over the follow-up period and their amount of time spent sedentary. Again, as Cathy alluded to, 
obviously, even if you have an objective measure of physical activity, it's just a it's, it's, it's better than self-report, but the precision is not 100%. And we can measure body weight, we can measure fat mass very, very precisely. And if you have a less precise measure of physical activity and model that as your exposure, the result's going to be attenuated. If you flip it around and model the more precise measure as the, as the exposure, fat mass or, bo or, or, or body weight, uh, you're going to observe an association but, and the effect size is going to be correct, but the uncertainties ex exemplified by the confidence intervals are going to be much, much greater. So this has been uh, demonstrated in, 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 in other studies. Uh, the weight gain uh, over 10 years was a significant determinant of physical inactivity. Uh, and also great weight gain over uh, a three-year period, suggesting again that there might be some sort of a reverse causality or bidirectional association between these two variables. Uh, so to summarize, the prospective association between physical activity and gain in body weight and BMI is weak, but we can, we, we can probably obs we can observe, it, observe it in some studies and not in others. It might be uh, due to measurement error of our, our exposure variable, in this case physical activity. High levels of physical activity and maintaining high levels of activity appears to reduce the risk of becoming obese over time. This might be limited to those, uh, those ones who are normal weight at baseline. The association between physical activity and, body, and obesity is likely bidirectional, uh, I mean a, a, re a reverse causation. And the amount and intensity of act activity needed to maintain a healthy body weight throughout adulthood is unknown, but it might be substantial. Uh, so, despite this, I think one of the most important things for public health is to increase physical activity levels throughout the population. And small shifts in the popula on a population level may have significant uh, effects on, 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 on the health outcomes in the population. And just to demonstrate, this is some data from the same EPIC study where we looked at physical activity and all-cause mortality stratified into the, uh, into the three different BMI groups the reference group is the inactive, and if you have, have a normal body weight and you go from the inactive to the moderately inactive group, you reduce your risk for mortality by 24%, and if you're obese, you also have substantial risk reduction of about 16%. It's the same for, for waist circumference. Going from being inactive to being moderately inactive reduces the risk uh, quite substantially. And what is the difference between these two groups? Well, it's about 20 minutes of brisk walking, or 100 kilocalories expended in physical activity. And, uh, physical, physical activity. So, my take-home message is that physical activity prevents weight gain in a small segment of the population who are normal weight and highly physically active. Maybe a bit provo provocative. But I strongly think that health, the health benefits from physical activity are w very well established. They are undisputable. And we should have a stronger focus on emphasis on promoting physical activity for health rather than focusing on weight and on the scale. And the challenge is to shift the focus from body weight loss to lifestyle behavior change and improve or promote physical activity in the entire population. Thank you very much.